In, in this video, we're going to do our first 10 minutes SQL. What does that mean? We're going to work for 10 minutes. So we're going to use a timer. We're going to use this Petrotel project that we're going to use in the course as well in other lectures. Download the file that is attached to this lecture, which is called 10 minutes yeah, SQL.SQL. So download that to your machine, to a folder of your choice. And then we're going to use in this website. These are the tools that we're going to use to be able to work on our database project for the first time. Here I'm on my other page. I will start the timer. I've got the file here. You can open that with any text editor. And what I'm going to do here now, first of all, is from line eight, I'm going to copy in the URL here, which is onecompiler.com slash PostgreSQL go to my browser and paste it in there. And on this page here in the browser, uh, here on the top right, uh, pretty close to the red run button, I'm going to make this full screen. Then here, uh, there are some lines of code already. I will delete them. And now I go back to my file. I can control A and control C, uh, select everything and copy everything. And now here control V to paste it. Here we have the data and the comments that we're going to work with. Let me first explain what's included. First of all, we have some light gray lines like this one here or the lines at the beginning. Those are just comments. So they are for the humans, for the developers or for other users uh, in order to be able to understand what's supposed to go on in this file. And then we have uh, basically beyond this, we have three different sections here in the file. The first one is uh, this a section where we have two create table statements. So we're going to create a path table and a owners table. And then we have a different insert statements that start with insert into, and then specifying the table name and so on. We're going to look at this in more detail in a second. And then we're having a, some a select statements. So a select is always uh, getting saying, give me uh, the data from uh, this or from that. In this case, we're going to get everything. So all columns and also all um, rows uh, from the corresponding tables here, which is owners and pets. Now let's execute this to see the result. Here on the right hand side, we get uh, the corresponding output. Here's some more or less technical information, but here we get the data as well uh, in a nicely formatted table uh, for the owners as well as for the pets. And now let's uh, dive into some more detail. I will enlarge this so you can see that better. Uh, first of all, here in the first part, we're going to cre uh, we are creating uh, this table and the other table, which is pets and owners. Right. And here for the pet table, for example, what information would we typically need? Well, I, I guess you guessed something like this as well. We need a name for the pet. We need to know maybe what type of pet it is. And most of all, we need to know uh, who it belongs to. And then we have some other columns here, which is a birth date and an identify a unique identifier. And this is meant to be uh, to identify this value in a table. Why a unique identifier? Well, um, because uh, there could be, for example, several animals with the same name or even the same uh, pet type and the same birth date, obviously, but they still keep uh, being uh, different pets and not the same. Also, though in terms of data, obviously they are similar. Then uh, when we create a table, we not only specify on the column names, as you can see here, we also have to uh, define at least a data type for each column. For example, here two columns that we have are, no, three columns, sorry, uh, are of type integer. So this means that our whole numbers, be it positive or negative. Then we have uh, many columns that are of type of our chart. So there are uh, strings, basically uh, any combination of uh, numbers, letters, and other special characters. And then also here uh, for the birth date, we have the date data type. Uh, so this means we have something like this date here, uh, input as a string, which is converted by the database to a date automatically. And then uh, obviously we want to know uh, who's the owner of a certain 
uh, pad. So here we have a references a column that references the owners table and there the ID column. So this makes sure that we have to have an owner always with uh, some uh, valid uh, minimum information in the owners table before we can insert a corresponding pad uh, for this owner. So it's like a, a two step process. Then for the owners also the table structure is pretty similar. It's even easier because here now we don't have any reference and we have um, most of the columns right char and this one here as a unique identifier again and most of those columns here as well as in the paths table are defined as not null uh, BC, uh, after the data type uh, which basically means uh, those values have to be provided when we insert data into this table. This produced these two uh, technical outputs here, just informing us that the tables have been created. And then we have the next step here where we insert data into those tables. So first we insert into owners. Like I said, we need an owner before we can insert a corresponding pad for the owner. Uh, so if we uh, just want to insert into the owners table and have values for all the columns, we can just write insert into owners and then provide values as a keyword and in parentheses followed uh, there uh, the individual values uh, for each of the columns in the order that they uh, occur in the owners table like you can see here id first name last name phone and email and then for the uh, Second pair of owners here for three and four, we have a slightly different insert statement. Why? Uh, because here, uh, as you have seen, if we only specify that and uh, the last column is called email and it's of a type of our chart, but we don't specify that it has to be provided. So it can be null if we don't specify not null here. And this means when I want to insert an owner without an email address, I'm basically specifying all the columns in the order that I want, uh, where I have information for. And then after these uh, recently, the values keyword, and then the uh, information for all the columns in the same order that I have them here specified in the first pair of parentheses. Then for the pets, it's easier. We have uh, all the values for all the columns for all the paths. So we just insert them and then last but not least, we query the data here. And now let's make this a bit more practical. Uh, we have a small issue here. Uh, one of the employees comes up to us and says, okay, can you please check the database? I heard you know SQL and we say, yes, of course. And uh, they tell us that a a pet called Fluffy uh, is not doing very well. It has not eaten in one day. And now you've learned that, that you can add a where condition to a select asterisk from a table. Uh, so this is what we are going to do here now. We're going to say, okay, uh, the condition here is where the pet name, as you can see here on the right hand side, uh, this is the columns name. Uh, the pet name is equal to Fluffy. And so the spelling here and the format of providing is such a value like the name of the animal should be the same as in the insert statement. So we run this again with this additional condition. And then we say, okay, there are two values um, with uh, two lines with Fluffy as a pet name here. So we have to be more specific. So we have to add another condition that also has to be true, which is uh, done by using this and keyword. And then we ask them what type of pet is it? Is it a cat or a dog? And they tell us it's a cat. And then we specify this as well. So we say the pet type should be a cat. So it's done like this. And now hopefully we get the correct value out of the database. And then there you have it. And you say, okay, but I don't need uh, all the columns. Uh, how to do that? Well, you've heard that as well. Uh, you can instead of the asterisk uh, specify the columns that you want to have. Let's do that for the owner now, because now we know that it's three, the owner ID uh, for this um, pet. So we can say here where uh, ID 
equal to three for the owners table, but from the owners table, we only want the name, the first name of the person and the phone and number. So we can type um, again, part of the name here and execute this query. And now we will have a reduced output here where it says Nancy and the corresponding phone number and also here the corresponding pad information. And this way we can call Nancy and tell her, okay, uh, I think we have a problem here, but maybe she knows how to resolve that, how to make the cat eat again. Maybe she has something she especially likes to eat. And in any other way, we have to ask her to pick up the cat again. So our time is up and we've done our 10 minutes SQL. I hope you liked it. I really enjoyed doing this exercise with you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A below this video. See you in the next one.